Explosive is the only word you can use to describe some weapon systems. And I'm about to see some of the biggest, most powerful war machines ever created. I'm on a live fire mission aboard a fully loaded attack aircraft, the Spooky. This is definitely going to be the biggest bullet I've ever fired. Against this kind of muscle, you don't stand a chance. take to the seas aboard the very first of a new class of warship. And I get to play with one of its hovercrafts. Just keep it under 50. I got it. I'll also be attempting a shot further than I've ever fired before with one of the greatest sniper rifles in the world. I'm Richard Macklitz, a former Navy SEAL, and these are the future weapons that turn a simple offensive into a massive attack. the one thing a special operations team wants in the air when they're on the ground and all hell breaks loose the answer the ghostly figure of a hercules attack aircraft nicknamed spooky this is the latest generation of the ac-130 gunship that first saw action back in vietnam the c-130 airframe was designed to transport troops and artillery to the front line it was quickly realized that instead of just carrying the firepower, you could build it into the actual plane. And the A for attack was added to the C-130. Now, with improved armaments, avionics, battle management sensors, and countermeasures, all 13 AC-130Us are currently assigned to the Air Force Special Operations Command, based at Pearlbert Field in Florida. The reason I'm here is that the Spooky's current weapon systems are about to undergo a field test, and I've been granted exclusive access. In just a few hours, I'll be taking part in a highly charged mission to demonstrate the devastating firepower this mega gunship can unleash onto the battlefield. Tell you what, fasten your seatbelts. When this baby blows, you're gonna feel it in this plane. Nobody knows that better than the pilots. Men like Captain Jay Womble, who's been flying spooky for over two years. All right, tell me a little bit about the tactical environment you have to operate in. Typically, we'll work in a medium to low threat environment based on the capabilities of the aircraft, uh, mostly at night, and we'll be blacked out to kind of protect the aircraft. It's the spooky's firepower that I'm really interested in. So, time for a quick rundown of the weapon systems, starting with the Gatling gun. Right here, we have the 25 millimeter weapon system. Aerial gunner Sergeant Jim Yoakum has already racked up 11 years of service on these gunships. What's it like firing this bad boy? It's it's amazing. When we do a fit 350 round burst, the airplane is just continually jarring. You can smell it. And uh, our 350 round burst is what we like to call the crowd pleaser. And if the crowd below demands an encore, there's plenty more to follow. Now look at this monster over here. This is incredible. What's this? Yeah, we have here is a 105 millimeter howitzer cannon. We carry 100 rounds of this on board. It's manually loaded. The firing rate for this is pretty much dependent on the individual gun crew. It, we like to shoot it at, at about seven to eight rounds a minute. And uh, this is my personal favorite. It requires the most manual interaction and uh, gives you the most bang for the bucks. Depending on the mission, the Spooky's howitzer can fire rounds capable of everything from airburst to hard target penetrators. We have one fuse on that that has two settings. One is a point detonating setting, where once that round strikes a target and impacts, it'll detonate at that point, um, creating about 3,000 pieces of shrapnel. We also have the hardened impact penetrator, the hip round. As soon as it gets through that wall, it is going to detonate as well. And between these two systems, the Spooky has until recently packed the 40 millimeter Bofors cannon which has been around since World War II. But I'm lucky enough to see the weapon that's about to replace it, the brand new Bushmaster II Mark 46 chain gun. This sleek, mean looking barrel is the latest upgrade on Spooky. It fires 30 millimeter rounds, 200 of them in a minute. 
The Bushmaster has already seen action with the Marines and will soon be ready for the Air Force. Future Spookies will be armed with twin Bushmasters doubling the firepower and making life a lot easier for the maintenance guys on the ground. If I had to order a bolt for a 40, it's going to take me a couple of weeks to get. This is a brand new system. It'll be, it'll be there. It'll be accessible. I'll be able to get that aircraft off the ground faster so we can put that on target. The Bushmaster's small round doesn't compromise on lethality. Far from it. We're getting a lot of lethality because it'll give us a better standoff. And it'll give us more accuracy when they go to shoot. But the refinements don't stop there. Spooky is also being lined up to carry a GPS-guided gliding munition very similar to JDAM. The ability to fly into the target is the key aspect of this weapon. Former Spooky gunner Bill Walter now develops advanced weapon systems for the Air Force Special Operations Command. Even when you've got precision or near precision with a JDAM, you still have a rather large warhead. This is 47 pounds. This can be used in much tighter constraint, much smaller areas without having to worry about collateral damage in the targeted area. Anybody can put down one kilo warheads all day long and it's not going to really matter if you don't hit the target. Therefore, the guidance, the wings, the fins, all the stabilization and the ability to fly into the target is the key aspect of this weapon. Focus lethality, put it right on the target. The thing that elevates the AC-130 uniform into a future weapons category is the advanced electronics and radar system that are on board in the Battle Management Center. It's here that they orchestrate the cacophony of chaos. To do that requires no less than five cruise stations, including two sensor operators who control the infrared detection set and the all-light level television systems. It sounds complex. And it is. The fire control system has four computers. Uh, two of them are designated as uh, fire control computers. It can track or, or train two targets at the same time and be ready to fire at any time on two separate threats. And that, folks, is the spooky AC-130U gunship. Now it's time to see this attack plane in action. I'm about to join its 13-man crew on a night flight mission. I get to cause havoc with a 25-millimeter Gatling gun. It fires 30 rounds in a second. And then I bring you the future of firepower, the electromagnetic gun. I'm at Hurlburt Field in Florida, finding out about one of the U.S. Air Force's most versatile and powerful weapon systems. It's called an AC-130, and you know, it's an attack aircraft, and the weapons put the attack into it. If it wasn't for the weapons being on here, it would have no bite, you know, and that's what we're here for. To see that bite for myself, I'm going to join the crew on a training exercise under the cover of darkness. We are going to be spooky 4-4, and uh, going to be operating on tail 512. We're going to have the uh, Afghanistan-type scenario. We're going to be blacked out, one row of uh, MBG lights in there. We have you have the harness on, your survival vest, helmet, oxygen, the whole nine yards. Codename Operation Swiper will be taking out targets on the simulated battlefield below us. The scenario centers around an enemy agent. It's typical of the missions faced by gunship crews in the real world. Uh, he's been uh, helping them identify and uh, place IEDs as well as making them. Uh, they want to stop that. Acceptable level of risk on this one, Commander, is medium. In state is that he's in our uh, custody. He's in de denied the ability to smuggle his uh, foreign fighters in, uh, tried his forces, and then uh, destroy the enemy safe havens that are uh, throughout the area. Before I go anywhere, though, I need to be kitted out with the right gear. Oh, yeah. Is that better? Relax. Yes. <laughs> the AC-130 is unpressurized, so I need to be fitted with an oxygen mask for when we're at high altitude. Okay, how does that feel? Pretty good? Okay, I'm just going to go up at altitude. When night falls, that's when Spooky comes into its own. Now, it may not look that stealthy, but trust me, it can creep into the right place at the right time to scare the right people. The 
beautiful thing is, I actually get to fire these. Uh, now, I'll tell you what, this is definitely going to be the biggest bullet I've ever fired. I'll tell you what, it isn't every day you get a ride on a bird like this. Clear number two engine. Number two is clear. Go pilot, check those complete. Let's go flaps, speed's good, flaps up, and take off my head. Let's check it out. The crew in the Battle Management Center locate their pre brief target with onboard sensors. TV gun to trainable channel A. Target is 145 degrees, 850 meters. Foco in. Once the onboard sensors have determined a target's exact location, the fire control officer selects the best weapon to take it out. Our first target is a building used for storing munitions. The 40 millimeter cannon is the weapon of choice, and I get to fire it. It's 470 meters, focus ready. Nice. Roger, target destroyed, stand by for next fire mission. A spec ops team in the field confirms that a large number of enemy personnel are gathering on the edge of the town. That sounds like a job for the crowd pleaser. A full burst from the Gatling gun. That is incredible. <laughs> Now, an enemy tank is blocking our ground troops from gaining access, so the spooky crew lock on with the howitzer to take it out. Channel B, target is 165 degrees, 785 meters, focus ready, channel B. Gun ready. Gun ready. Less than a minute later, the tank is no longer a threat, and I got to place the round on the target. Ceasefire. All guns are safe. All, all guns are safe. Thank you guys. That was fantastic. For me, the mission is over all too soon. Thanks to its legendary powers of endurance, a normal spooky outing can last as long as 10 hours, which is great news for the special ops team on the ground. And with the new, even deadlier weapon system scheduled to be on board soon, spooky is about to get a whole lot scarier. Still to come, a radically different concept in firepower. The electromagnetic gun produces no flash and no bang. Two, one, fire. But can reach out to an incredible 200 miles. Shells and missiles in operation today have basically one thing in common. They're all powered by explosive gases. But what if there was a cleaner way of launching a projectile? What if you could harness the power of electromagnetics? A new era for the projectile is now being ushered in, and it's coming faster than a speeding bullet. For the last 20 years, scientists have been working to develop a round that doesn't use explosive powders to generate energy. It's time for science fiction to evolve into science fact. Over a century and a half ago, Faraday discovered the link between electricity and magnetism, and the electric motor was born. Today, there are a number of research projects that are using the same principle to create devastatingly accurate future weapons. Right now, scientists and engineers are working diligently around the clock to develop a gun for the Navy that can fire a projectile at nearly Mach 8. That's right, almost eight times the speed of sound. Dahlgren in Virginia is home to the Navy's eight megajoule electromagnetic railgun. By the end of 2007, the Navy plans to start working with a prototype that is four times more powerful. 
Let's arm. Three, two, one, fire. The high voltage is created by charging up a bank of capacitors. Tom Boucher is test director. This is our single shot gun. This is our current rail gun that we use. It's uh, rated up to eight megajoules of capacity. There's an upper and a lower rails fully contained within this steel containment. We actually have 220 of these uh, 500,000 pound rated bolts and they've been pre-stressed uh, to hold everything together. Yet we can put enough current through this that if we don't carefully manage it, it would still come apart. We have huge amounts of forces that we're dealing with here. When the bank of capacitors discharge, a surge of current creates a massive magnetic field. This accelerates the metal projectile to mind-bending speeds. The Navy's goal is to develop a 64 megajoule electromagnetic railgun by 2016. That's eight times more powerful than this prototype, reaching projectile speeds up to 5,000 miles an hour. Basically, one ship offshore will be able to cover an arc of essentially 400 nautical miles in diameter. So you could essentially have the Special Forces guys on one side of the battlefield and a, a major operation on another side, and we'll be able to cover all those with one, one gun, one ship. This technology is so impressive that the Navy's actually planning on developing rounds that don't have warheads. That's because of the massive kinetic kill energy available to you at impact. The railgun comes in without explosives, but it's coming in very fast, and it's able to spread damage over a wide area by dispensing pellets, BBs, uh, think of a shotgun. Uh, you can dispense those and use the kinetic energy uh, to, to damage soft targets, uh, radar vans, planes, uh, infantrymen. Uh, and so that's, that's how you would attack the softer targets. The harder targets, you would leave the projectile intact. It would go into buildings and bunkers pretty much as a unitary projectile. And then the kinetic energy of impact would destroy those targets. The Navy wants to equip its new generation of electrically powered ships with this weapon, but there are hurdles for the scientists to overcome. The capacitors are bulky and the heat generated is enormous. But the Navy's confident it will find a solution and make these guns a reality. But this science isn't just being applied to big long range guns. I've traveled to Sandia National Laboratories in New Mexico to see a smaller, portable prototype. Meet the coil gun, intended for mounting on Army vehicles. Vehicles, its designers are aiming for a range of six miles. That's nearly a third more reach than current 120 millimeter mortar systems. Each coil provides thrust, so you fire these sequentially, one right after the other, much like if you had a surfer on a water wave, this is gonna ride the magnetic wave as it goes through the gun. Like the rail gun, the coiled gun uses a bank of capacitors as its power source. The challenge is to make them small enough to fit on a tank. Derek Lampa is the engineer in charge of the 50 millimeter prototype and I'm about to see it in action by firing it for myself. So this is definitely something I don't want to stick my tongue in or Everything put my in finger in there. Out there, you'll probably, if you touch the capacitor banks when they're charged, you'll vaporize your hand, yes, so. Vaporize the hand, it's, that's what I was going for. Yeah. <laughs> 50 millimeter coil test beds preparing to charge and fire for a full energy shot. Now I'll be activating the power supply. Activating some power supply. Activating high voltage. High voltage is on and charging. How long does it take to charge? It takes about a minute to charge, and we're watching the amount of current that's going into the power supply. Right. And then over here is the uh, number of kilovolts that are on the capacitors at the time. Got it. Coil gun preparing to fire. All right. Three, two, one, fire. Fire. Driven by electricity alone, this projectile reached an incredible 715 miles an hour. All right, so we now have that projectile that's been thrown in here, right? Yes, sir. All right, let's take a look. Pop, pop, yeah. All right. It's usually in this area. It's in that area? Stops. Okay, let's see. Well, you know what? I think, I think you were right. 
it kind of feels like I'm pulling out a bunch of rags with this thing. Well, that's correct. Not only have you uh, compressed all of it, but you've actually melted some of the, the, the synthetic fibers oh, in the rag that. to the projectile. Now, it's, it's amazing to think that this was just pushed out by directed energy. Mm -hmm. There's no explosives, nothing that happened. Matter of fact, you wouldn't even heard it outside maybe the crack of the speed of sound if it was going that fast. Yes. But essentially, if it wasn't for us hitting this box and that box hitting into that wood, we wouldn't have heard this round. This is correct. We, we've, it's been compared to a champagne cork popping. The Army's ultimate goal is a 120 millimeter mortar system that can fit onto vehicles. And that's exactly what program director, Dr. Bob Terman, is working on. Okay, this is the uh, 120 millimeter mortar gun that is under construction. Okay. Uh, we will uh, complete construction here in about uh, two months and then start testing afterward. All right, so this is it, huh? This is uh, the weapon system. This is the gun mount. The barrel will go directly uh, in front of it. This is the mortar round that we will shoot. Uh, that is an inert test round. Uh, the 120-millimeter mortar round is in the front. This is designed as a tail kit. Mm -hmm. The tail kit ties in to the mortar round. The armature that pushes the round is in this location here. These are the tail fans that provide the stability for, for the round. Electricity and magnetism have been understood and used for nearly two centuries. Now it looks like scientists are on the verge of harnessing this power to create a new breed of future weapons to bring to the battlefield of tomorrow. Next, the ultimate sniper challenge. The target is less than two feet wide. It's almost one and a half miles away. And all I have to do is hit it. hit a target, he needs accuracy. To do it from a distance, he needs range. For an effective kill of that target, he needs power. You can't have all three at once, so today's sniper has to choose the weapon that's most suited for that particular mission. Anyone who has ever fired a sniper rifle, including myself, has an opinion about which weapon system is the best. Now, there is a dilemma when you talk about capability. When you talk about pure accuracy, well, you tend to give up range. When you're talking about incredible range, you tend to give up power. When you're talking about pure power, well, you tend to give up accuracy and range. But what if there was a weapon system out there that could give you all three capabilities on a world-class level? One weapons manufacturer claims to have developed a sniper system that does exactly that. Here at Arco, Idaho, I'm about to see if their claims are true. On this show, I've had the absolute privilege of firing some of the most amazing sniper systems on the planet. But there are whispers of a weapon system that's so incredible, it could be the best. This is the Shitek M200. It gives a whole new meaning to the word. Intervention. The Shitek intervention system is made up of three separate parts. First, the specifically designed 408 round. Second, the M200 lightweight bolt action sniper rifle. Third, the advanced ballistic computer. It helps the sniper overcome the dozens of physical and environmental variables he has to take into account. By putting that all together, the people behind the Shitek intervention system believe. They have created what may be the best sniper system on the planet. This is probably one of the best rifles, if not the best sniper system that I've ever seen anywhere in the world. The Shitek intervention system goes farther, faster, hits harder, and hits with more accuracy than basically any other gun that's ever been built. What excites me most about Shitek is its ability to perform, its accuracy, and the ability to seize the distance. It's all about how slippery we can be through the air. After 16 years in the firearm industry, Robin Sharpless knew that the first thing they had to get right was the bullet. The bullet is the thing that we have to have get to the target. So really, it's the natural place to begin. Let's just 
design the bullet that can be the best possible, that can move through the air better than any before it, that can have less resistance, that can be more predictable in its flight path. And then, once we have that, let's build the system out from there. Existing rounds weren't up to the job. We had a capabilities gap, we had a technology gap between the 338, which is a wonderful round, and the 50. The solution was to create a completely new round called the 408. The thing that makes the 408 round such a mean round is that it stays supersonic out to 2,200 yards. Beyond 400 yards, it has more kinetic energy than a 50 cal round. It's one third the weight and has significantly less recoil. With night drawing fast, I have the perfect opportunity to test one of the most important capabilities of any sniper system, stealth. It's important to remember that threats happen 24 hours a day, and you want a weapon system that can perform in that environment. shy -Tech, well, they have the answer. All right, Chris, what are we doing tonight? We're gonna do some night shooting at distance on some steel out to 600 yards. Former Navy SEAL sniper Chris Kinney has already set up this system for a night shoot. Tell me what we got going on here. We have a suppressor up front, STW suppressor, a B Mars one watt laser to add more light down range if you need it, IR light. A Simrad 203 for night vision that slips right onto your day scope. And of course we have the chi -Tech Intervention M200. Tell me a little bit about the suppressor. The suppressor, you not only use it during day, but you want to use it at night because it cuts down tremendously on the noise and the flash. The night vision scope allows the sniper to see targets up to 750 yards away. It doesn't emit an infrared signature, so you won't give away your position. Now it's time to put a hole in armor. That's it. Two shots. How do you think we did? I think you'll be uh, quite happy. Well, it looks pretty black out here. Yeah. Is it here? Yep, it's right up here. There it is. It's about here. It's incredible. We're talking 600 yards. That half inch of steel moving right through it. And that group is incredible. Coming up, I test the 408 round the M200 and the advanced ballistic computer at an incredible range of almost a mile and a half. I've come to Argo, Idaho to check out the shy -Tech M200 intervention system that claims to be the best sniper rifle ever created. To be able to hit a long-range target, a sniper must rely on years of training and experience. Distance, wind speed and direction, the type of round, there are dozens of factors that must be taken into account. shy -Tech has decided to let technology do a lot of the heavy lifting with the advanced ballistic computer. This is about using technology to give you a very precise firing solution so you know where the round's gonna go. And now what we've done is we've taken the capability to remove every possible variable that could damage that flight or could change that flight. And once we do that, we know exactly where the bullet's gonna wind up. All the computer does is then put the crosshairs where that bullet's gonna wind up. Believe it or not, at extreme distances, you even have to take into account the rotation of the Earth and your position on it. At the equator, of course, your stationary target is actually moving almost 1,000 miles an hour. So if it's a two and a half second flight time on the bullet, your target's moving 1,000 miles an hour for two and a half seconds, and we, we correct for that. To really push the intervention system to the limit, we need a big landscape. The Arco Pass is the perfect location for some really long-range shooting because it's exactly the kind of terrain this system might be used in. Chris, when I look over at this terrain, what's this remind you of? Why do you want to train out here? It should remind a lot of people, especially operators, of a little place called Afghanistan and parts of Iraq right now. 
the caves, the rough terrain, the elevation. I mean, we can jump right over across the other side of this hill and be in the flatlands like certain parts of Iraq. To test the M200 out, we've set up two targets. The first is at 900 yards, and the second is at, wait for it, 2,530 yards. That's almost a mile and a half of rugged, mountainous, windswept terrain to cover. You have multiple wind scenarios. As we've been standing here, the wind's changed at least 10 times. Absolutely. Different directions and different speed. You gonna show me? Yeah, I'm gonna show you. All right, let's go. Today we're going to be shooting the 419 grain 408 caliber bullet. So you would just tap here, pick your bullet from the pull-down menu, 419, put your muzzle velocity in, how fast it's coming out of your gun. You need to put in your wind data, at gun, speed and direction, where it's coming from and how fast it's going. To measure the wind speed and direction, as well as dozens of other environmental factors, you need a device like the Kestrel 4000 weather station. Barometric still 2443. Okay. All the data from this is then fed into the advanced ballistics computer. It's time to get down to business, isn't it? Time to get down to business. First up is the 900 yard target. This is about three times the effective range of a standard assault rifle. But for the Shytek M200, it's just a warm up. Hit. Hit. Five o'clock. Hit. Center mass. Thank so you. hitting a target that's just over a half a mile away is pretty straightforward. Now it's time for the real test. At nearly three times that distance, the next target is 2,500 and 30 yards away. Yeah, what I have to do with me. That's easily more than the length of 25 football fields. It's also just 127 yards short of the longest ever confirmed sniper kill made during Operation Anaconda in Afghanistan by Corporal Rob Furlong. To make things even harder, just as I'm about to make my attempt, the wind picks up. So now we're pressed out to 2,530 yards. <laughs> About six o'clock. Hold slightly higher. All right, done. Did you see that rock? You just nicked the rock right behind it. Just a bow, wasn't it? Yeah. The plate was right here. You went right here. <laughs> 12 o'clock. So just hold slightly lower. Ooh. Is that 11 o'clock on the plate? Yep. There's a, there's a mark on the plate right there at 11 o'clock. Incredible. That was a clean target. Incredible. Now i found my hold. Time to take two more shots. All right. Let's go down range and see what we did. All right, let's go take a look at it. I think we're, on, we're just shy of basically a 1,000 yards, right? Yep. Pretty much every round is on target. Good shoot. And look at the penetration, though. That's a thing that's crazy. So if somebody's trying to hide behind that, say in a vehicle, they're up to no good. At this kind of range, no problem. No problem. Right through it. Right through it and right into them. And to see that, you know, that we were on the other, almost on the half side of that ridge over there. Yep. Taking that shot. 900 yards away. You think someone could see you up there? No. I'll tell you what. I'm impressed. Now, since walking over here a thousand yards across this range has been a lot of fun, we we're having a blast. We're actually going to send somebody out to go get the one that's even further out, the 2530. And uh, we'll take a look and see what happened. It took this poor guy 25 minutes to cover the distance twice, just to bring back the target. 
And at 2,530 yards, we did this. A three-round group. I would never have been able to do that with any other weapon system, flat out. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Uh, if, I, if, if there is, I might have gotten lucky with one round with somebody. But to put a three-round group on a target this small, I, I would have thought that to be impossible. We don't ever anticipate or wish to replace the skill, the training, the things that are necessary to make a great sniper or a great spotter. What we want to do is we want to amplify their capability, enhance their capability, so that you know we can go to ranges that were never thought of before. And we can do it with impunity. Again, mission accomplished, threat removed, time to go home.